for today's session, which is on the time-saving virtual tools to rock every fundraiser's world. I'm going to get to intros in just a moment, but I am joined by Rachel Muir and Julia Campbell today, and I'm Rachel Clemens. Um, and we're going to be talking, I mean, you know, look, this is a really trying time right now. We want to help you make your life easier um, with some virtual tools to help you connect with your audiences right now. And we're hearing from a lot of uh, fundraisers out there that many of you don't want to be insensitive to the current landscape, but you also don't want to stop your fundraising and we don't want you to stop your fundraising. So we're going to share some time saving tools to make it easier for you to do just that to, to really deepen relationships in this time. So again, I'm Rachel Clements. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Mighty Citizen. If you're not familiar with Mighty Citizen, we are the branding and digital transformation agency for nonprofits, associations, universities and governments. That means essentially we work with clients through their branding, their messaging, their fundraising campaigns, websites, all in an effort to help them increase their revenue, revenue, boost awareness, and better their communities. And I'm joined today by another Rachel. We are the Rachel Duo. This is Rachel Muir, and uh, she's going to be walking you today through tools that can help you connect to your donors right now. And Rachel is one of my very favorite people. We actually travel oh, together a lot. Oh, there she is. <laughs> One of my very favorite people. We uh, we do travel together a lot, and this session actually started on an airplane when we started sharing kind of the tools we were using at the moment to better connect with our audiences. And so we just thought this would be a great thing to take to everybody else. We've done hopefully the heavy lifting for you, and can just bring those ideas to you. But Rachel uh, started a found a nonprofit called Girl Start when she was just 26, and Girl Start's a nonprofit dedicated to empowering girls in math, science, engineering, and technology or STEM. She started the nonprofit with $500 and a credit card. And several years later, she had raised $10 million and was featured on CNN, The Today Show, and Oprah. Y'all, this woman met Oprah, dream come true. Um, she Today, she helps fundraisers love their jobs, delight their donors, and raise big gifts. And she's also the mom of twins, so you know she has learned how to be productive over the years, and especially right now. Rachel and I are joined by Julia Campbell, and Julia is also the mom of two and the author of two books, one of which is hot off the press. She's also a two-time Peace Corps volunteer. I think Julia's got a thing for the number two. And <laughs> <laughs> keep going. She, does, she doesn't stop at one. Um, through her consultancy, Julia helps nonprofits plan and launch marketing campaigns so they can gain more visibility and raise more money online. And she is going to be sharing tools um, from her deep and broad expertise as, an, as a social media guru. So we know more people are online right now. And so she'll be sharing tools for connecting with them where they are on their social platforms. So by the end of this session today, you'll have new tools to be there. Uh, for donors and constituents when you can't be there physically, so how to um, continue that relationship and ultimately deepen those relationships. We want you to be more recognizable and memorable to your donors. Again, we're going to try to cut through the noise. There's a lot of noise right now, a lot of communications flying back and forth, and we want to do things that actually resonate. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping you'll save time by letting the technology do the work for you, which is something we all need right now, and stay in touch with your audience is in creative ways. And then again, stand out like a rainbow unicorn in your donor's inbox, mobile device, or mailbox. Um, and as we launch in, I just want to say up front that um, we do not receive any payments, any royalties. There's no affinity links or anything like that in here. We don't get any of that from the makers of the tools. Um, these are tools that we have all used individually. Uh, we don't work for them. Nobody else works for them. So we're just nerds who love to share our tools and figured <laughs> why not share with us. I fully embrace the nerd moniker for sure. Okay, so let's just start real quickly with what we know and where we are. Y'all, we are stressed out. I know this goes without saying, we are all in the same boat. Many of us are trying to lean in to everything that's being requested of us or expected of us right now. We are also raising children, we're trying to homeschool, we're trying to keep our jobs. Um, right now, the struggle is real. And to stay safe, we're being told to physically distance ourselves, but our need for human connection has never been greater, right? We're missing each other's faces um, and we're looking for ways to connect. And this means we have an opportunity to deepen our donor relationships right now. So we're gonna talk about tools that will help us ju do just that. So I'm gonna hand this over to Rachel Muir. And let me do that real quickly. Bear with me. 
coming over your way, Rachel. Okie dokie. Awesome. Oh, yay. Now I can see the audience view. And let's see. Um, I didn't see where it's inviting. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Show my screen. Okay. Perfect. La la la. So you've got, yay. It's working. Awesome. Yeah. I love it when technology works. Um, well, we're thrilled to have all of you joining us today. And I'm going to be talking today um, about uh, my goal is to help you keep calm and fundraise on. And I'm going to be giving you specifically some virtual tools to connect with donors. The silver lining in this crisis, my fundraising friends, is you have a golden opportunity to connect with your donors like you've never connected with them before. You have a great opportunity to deepen your relationships with your donors. They're more available than they were before. And I'm gonna show you some really awesome tools to help you do that. And this is the stalker side of me to let you know if your message is getting through to your donors as well. So we're gonna have a lot of fun and you're gonna really enjoy these tools. And I wanna invite you to type into the chat who you think who you think has the longer attention span the human or the goldfish my fundraising friends so type in the chat and just tell us who you think has the longer attention span and um let's see what people are telling us here we still got some people popping in um i'll let you tell us rachel if you're seeing um lots of answers in the comments. i'm not seeing anything actually okay all talking? right <laughs> oh wait oh wait here we go i'm sorry yes i do uh most people are saying goldfish goldfish okay well good news you guys you still have a longer attention span than a goldfish <laughs> there was this stat that was floating around the interwebs that was saying that people's attention span was shorter than a goldfish uh eight seconds versus nine seconds respectively but that is not true humans have beat out the goldfish the the issue here um, isn't that our attention spans are shrinking, they're actually just evolving. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove this to you. You might get distracted in a board meeting, but you do not get distracted when you're binge watching your favorite Netflix series. The fire hose of content that we face every day, it just makes us more selective about what gets our attention which is why video is so compelling. I mean, you see it everywhere now. You see it on LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram. Why not in your email? So I wanna invite you guys while I'm showing you, the first tool that I'm gonna show you is video email, which is one of my all time favorite tools. And I wanna invite you throughout this presentation, type into the chat your favorite technology tool that you use to connect with your donors. I'm gonna be talking about um, tools, especially that fundraisers would use to get in front of their donors. Rachel's going to be sharing a lot of awesome productivity tools. Julia's going to be sharing some fantastic social media tools, but we love to hear from you. So type into the chat, share with the class anytime today, of course, a question that you have, but also your favorite technology tool that you use to connect with your donors. So a drum roll, please. The first tool that I'm going to share with you guys is one of my all time favorite tools. I have been a customer of this tool for, I think, four years now. It's video email. Um, I I use bomb bomb they are out of colorado springs colorado I actually was doing a training for the united states olympic committee and got to actually go to bomb bomb's offices because i am that much of a nerd <laughs> and like hug the people there that i know uh, but i really love this tool i don't work for this company i don't get paid if you sign up with them but i think this is a phenomenal tool that you can use to connect with your donors and what you're seeing right now is a screenshot of yours truly. Um, you can actually send a video email directly from your inbox. When this company started out, and they have a great entrepreneurial story as well, um, but when they started out, you they have this dashboard that you log in, and you'll see this in a second. They have this branding that they make for you, and it's kind of like what you would imagine your branding looks like for your emails that you send, like your email templates. Um, but now um, you can actually send a video email directly from your inbox. And I don't know about you, but I am not a fast typist, nor am I any good at typing, to be totally honest. 
I completely threw typing in high school. I, I thought that if I was good at typing, I was going to be stuck being a secretary and then I would never get to be a CEO and start my own company. So I specifically did not do well at typing. I regret it to this day. That was a very bad choice that um, 15 year old me made. But one of the neat things about Bomb Bomb is if you're a bad typist like me, you can save so much time and just send someone a video email. But it really just connects you face to face with people. And uh, it's super convenient. It plugs into Gmail. It also plugs into Outlook. By the way, I've got a link down there um, where you can download all of these tools and even see a sample video email. It's rachelmuir.com forward slash tools. So Bomb Bomb uses your webcam or you can also, there's a mobile app, so you can use the mobile app and shoot videos from your phone. You could be, you know, um, outside, um, you know, someday when we're not all on lockdown, you might be with your clients again and you could shoot something. Um, it's really great for getting a virtual visit. It's really great for stewardship. It's a really incredible tool. I love using it. You're seeing some examples right now um, of BombBomb Bomb video email with the actual branding. So that's my branding right there. And uh, I train people to be better at their fundraising. I do a lot of online classes and online workshops. And before the lockdown, I also did stuff in person. So for someone like me, it's really important that people see my face and hear my voice so they can get a sense of what it's like to work with me. Some of the careers, obviously, that, that, that would be very important for video email, uh, real estate, financial planners, but it's really great for fundraisers as well you can click on that you can go to that bitly link julie puppy with a capital j and see our friend uh julie edwards the executive director of the main site of northeast georgia in an adorable video that she sent totally unscripted thanking her donor with sweet potato pie yes sweet potato pie that's with that dog right there and uh julie uh just sends this this donor this video email thanking them for their gift i think it was like giving a uh, giving tuesday um that they gave to but this is a really really neat tool that you can use it's so intuitive i have not even ever taken a training from bomb bomb all this time and i'm still able to use this successfully Again, you can drop your email right uh, right there and you'll get this cheat sheet of all the tools that we're talking about today and a sample video email. And it's a sample video email that I made specific to thanking donors who uh, give gifts to you now in uh, the coronavirus, because I do believe it's really specific uh, and it's really important, I should say, that you call them out um, in a time that's so worrying and stressful the fact that they're thinking about others speaks volumes about who they are as a person. I mean, I want you to make your donors feel awesome every day. And this is another great way that you can make your donors feel absolutely fantastic. So the super neat thing about this tool is that if you set it to notify you um, when someone opens your email or plays a video or clicks on a link, whatever you want, if you set it to do that, you will get an email every time they watch the video. So poor Julie Edwards from the Humane Society of Northeast Georgia did indeed set that email um, so that she would get notified when her donor watched that. So if you've clicked on that link, Julie's getting a lot of messages right now that someone's watching this video and she's probably thinking, oh, that Rachel Muir, she's probably doing a webinar again. <laughs> But I really like this tool and I love this feature of it, especially because, you know, when do you want to call your donor and talk to your donor when you're top of mind with them and you get a chance to call them up and say, hey, Julie Collins, I was just thinking about you. And she can say, oh, my God, I was just thinking about you. It is a really neat tool. I just think it's fantastic. Um, I mean, even if even if it's just a matter of you sending, I mean, for me, like, I might send a, a send something to someone that I work with as a contractor, and I know if they read it right, or, right away that okay, they they read that they're probably going to get to that task. I mean, it's so handy. Um, do donors like it? Absolutely. I did a training uh, three years ago for the Girl Scouts National Convention. It is the largest girl-led event in the world, 
it was really amazing. And um, I showed this tool to the fundraisers that were there. And one of them used it immediately. She signed up. You can get a free two-week trial. She signed up for it, and she had been trying to get this donor to buy a table at her um, event. And immediately, the donor responded, asked if she could buy a table. She opened the video six times. So this is a really neat tool. And some more props for my uh, my friend Carissa Gump at the National Strength Strength Training Conditioning Association is one of the teams uh, in the United States Olympic um, family, one of the um, teams there, and one of her donors sent out this tweet and said, hey, I've donated to many causes, but only one thanked me with a personal video message. So donors really like it. You're probably thinking, nice, Rachel, how much is this going to set me back? What kind of mad cheddar are we talking about today? So $470 is the nonprofit rate. I will say that uh, dur since this pandemic began, BombBomb does give free accounts to teachers. So if any of you uh, are teachers, um, anyone, anyone watching this um, in teaching, uh, that is something that you should know about. Uh, it's, a really, it's a really great tool. You get a free two-week trial. Another vendor that is similar to BombBomb Bomb is ThankView. You can kind of think about it as like the paperless post of video email. ThankView is really popular with universities. Just like BombBomb, Bomb, it uses your webcam or your mobile app. And you can visit thankview.com. You can enter your name and email, and they will send you a sample. Um, I mentioned paperless post. And if you think if you've ever received an invitation from paperless post, it looks like it's kind of like animation and this envelope opens up and, and the invitation pops out. So that's kind of like what Thank You looks like. Again, it's really popular with universities. I see a lot of universities that like to use their mascot in the interior envelope with that kind of branding. So super neat tool, um, more expensive, uh, starts at $2,000 annually with the nonprofit discount. So a couple video email tools there for you, BombBomb Bomb, as well as ThankView. My favorite thing about them is that you know if people read your email, but I'm gonna show you another way to know that without buying video email. Um, because I mean, just type into the chat, type yes if you would like to know if people are reading your emails, but not in that creepy Microsoft Outlook read receipt kind of way. If you would just like to know, type in yes, but you don't want the person to get this super awkward, awkward uh, notification that you're behaving like a stalker. Well, this is a great tool for you. It is called Banana Tag. And the website for you to go to to check out this tool is track.bananatag.com. You can send up to five emails a day for free, my fundraising friends. And what Banana Tag does is show you when your emails are opened and send you notifications when a contact opens your email or clicks on a link. And like I said, absolutely no one uh, knows that you are doing it. So uh, it is again, track.bananatag.com. It plugs in with Gmail, it plugs in with Outlook. Uh, if you're watching this webinar with your colleagues <laughs> and you decide that you want to get this um, no one can say oh I never read that email because you're absolutely going to know whether they read it or not but you can use this for free you can track up to five emails a day so my advice if you decide to do the free trial is it gives you an option on your email whether you want it tracked or not um, so just make sure that you're tracking the ones that you really care about but it is a really neat tool to use. Uh, I used to use banana, before I started using BombBomb, Bomb, I used uh, Banana Tag and I actually found out about it from my friend, uh, Rachel Clemens. So we are really into tools and talking about technology tools and platforms, and we're always out there um, finding new ones. This is one that I, I just used this today, subjectline.com, 100% free, my fundraising friends and you just type in your subject line and it will give you a rating like obviously a 100 is like you are killing it and you're just like knocking it out of the park but it'll tell you based on readability urgency um it'll tell you based on how long your subject line is if you have anything in there that's like a spam trigger 
I find so much inspiration from for-profit brands, including my own inbox and just emails that I get from vendors. Um, so, um, you know, we've got some here, Bath and Body Works, new hand soaps, you know what that means. I totally don't know what that means, but if I'm curious, I might open up that subject line. So my point here is just, I invite you to look at the subject lines. When you're, if, if you like me <clears throat> in your copywriting are feeling, you know, we've got a lot of communications professionals joining us today as well as fundraisers. But if you like me get stuck and you want some inspiration, keep a Google doc of your favorite subject lines. I have one, I was just looking at it last night. I put in all my favorite subject lines from all the emails I get. I mean, like from, from for-profit emails, from corporate emails, from all kinds of emails. I When I see a good subject line, I put it in my Google Doc of my favorite subject lines. So I invite you to do that. Um, one of my other tools, I've got two more tools I'm going to show you. And one of these is Felt. I love this. So I found out about this company when I was watching Shark Tank with my kids. I love watching Shark Tank. And this couple came on and um, they had created this uh, whole app <clears throat> to allow you to create handwritten cards right from your iPhone. They had gone to a dinner party and the wife told the husband, wouldn't it be nice if we could just send her a thank you card right from our phone? And the husband said, oh my God, you're so brilliant. Let's go start that company. And they did. And I'm sure right now you're wondering how they do on Shark Tank, what, what shark got it got behind them. It was Mr. Wonderful, and he gave them, I believe it was like $100,000. Um, they are, uh, like like my friends at BombBomb, Bomb, they are also out of Colorado. I think they're out of Telluride, Colorado. Um, so this is especially nice now. Um, maybe you are working from home and you can't access any of your materials from your office, You, but you've got a lot of great photos of your donors on your photo stream on your uh, phone and you want to let them know that you're thinking about them. So this is a really great app that you can use. It is so inexpensive. It's literally like $6 to send like three cards a month for a little bit more. They'll make the, your you your very own personalized stationery. And if you want to get really crazy with it and you want to literally send like 1000 cards, you can totally do that too. I think the price goes down to like $2. Uh, if you want to do that kind of level of volume, I had someone ask me that question. So these are my twins. They literally wrote happy father's day on the phone. You can use this on iPhone, Android, tablet, whatever. Um, not on a desktop though. Um, but they have all these hilarious cards like who knew mother-in-law day is an actual holiday. Uh, it is, and you can celebrate it <laughs> with the feltapp.com. It's a really neat app. I um, I sent this to. I did a custom training board. I did a board retreat, and the board members took. We took a photo of a power pose, and they. I sent it to them and thanking them. So this is super easy. You never look a stamp. You do the whole thing right from your phone, and your donor actually gets a, a, a handwritten thank you card in the mail with a stamp just like this. Really nice, very inexpensive, very affordable. You can even do a free seven day trial. Uh, they, they are still printing, they are still in operation. Um, you can pay per card, you can do a membership, uh, you can do custom branded stationery. Um, they don't have a nonprofit discount, but it's so affordable and you do get a discount if you go way higher numbers into bulk if you want. Again, you can get the list of all these tools and a sample video email. Uh, it's rachelmuir.com forward slash tools. My last tool that I'm gonna share with you guys is Textology. I love this tool. So I heard about this tool. I went to their website. I picked up the phone. I called, guess who answered the phone? The CEO of the company, his name is Justin Bear. And I said, oh my goodness, it's so cool that you answered your phone. I just love the whole idea of your company. I literally have called companies like back in the times before we were on lockdown and I would, a company would like call me to remind me of appointment. I would actually call them back and say, hey, why don't you use like a texting program? Cause that would be so awesome. Te you know, we have a 98% open rate on text messages, 90 
8%. So this is a really neat tool for you to use with your donors. One of the things I wanna to stress to you before I show you some examples of this tool is just the ease of use here. You can manage this whole thing from a desktop. Like you, you're, even though you're sending text messages to your donors, you're not doing it from your phone. You're actually doing it from your desktop. And just like Gmail has those like canned responses where you can just like use the same message again and again, you can, you can do the same thing with textology where uh, you just kind of copy the same message. This is a one-off. This is not a service where you're gonna send one message to like a thousand people. Um, Justin has that company, it's called Text Fox, but Textology is one off. So the plus of that is that you can get really personal with your donor. And the other plus of that um, is that your donor is not going to get that message like you get from vendors that say, if you, you know, messaging rates may apply, if you want to opt into this service, click here, or et cetera, et cetera. They're not going to get anything. It's just literally going to be a text message from you and that's it. This is fantastic to do for really great stewardship. So these were pre-coronavirus uh, examples that I, I actually, Justin made these for me. I said, hey, Justin, I want to go show a bunch of nonprofits how awesome your tool is. First off, he said, great, Rachel. I'll give anyone who says that you, who mentions you a 30-day 30 30-day 30 free trial. Okay, so you get that. Textology.co is the website. Just tell Justin, hey, I, I learned about you from Rachel. He'll give you a free trial. But these are some examples, um, just thanking donors for making a gift. Really simple, really easy. And these are some COVID-specific examples that I made. So I was just thinking, hmm, how neat would it be if Audubon was sending text messages, just checking in on their donors, because I know they do such great work and such great stewardship. And I said, I'm going to make up an example. I'm going to find a sweet-looking bird kind of took me a while because some a lot of images of birds they just you know they look a little angry <laughs> uh, but this heart face uh, I think this is a screech owl I'm not sure um, this heart shaped bird's face was very sweet and so I just made up this example hey Mark it's Lindsay from Audubon sending little bird therapy your way I'm thinking about you how are you doing and then I made up this example for a nonprofit who you know they're doing helping foster kids so they don't really have a lot of um, you know, it doesn't make sense for them to use an image, but you can use emojis. This is just check-in messages. Hey, how are you doing? So very affordable. This is their pricing. Again, you get a free one month trial. It's textology.co, not com, but co. And then my very last surprise, I have one more tool that I didn't even remember that I had in here, and that is Wyastamp. So I want you to stand out like the magic glitter unicorn that you are with your audience. And this is a neat way for you to just put your face in front of your donors. It is 100% free. You can go to wisestamp.com. I use this and it'll pull up a um, photo of you. And this is a really neat tool. You could be using it to promote something that you're doing. Maybe it's a virtual event or maybe it's like your student of the year, or maybe it's um, you know the, the pet, con pet photo contest and who won. Whatever it is that you wanna promote, you can absolutely do it. Again, it's completely free. Um, it'll just have a little get, you wanna get your own um, personal email signature, click here to find out more about Wisestamp. It'll have their little branding if you do it for free, but it is also affordable if you wanna sign up. That was my session before I, turn this over to the fantastic Joy Campbell. I just want to mention to you, oh my, okay, so that is Rachel, whoops, rachelmuir.com forward slash join, not J-O-I. <laughs> but I just launched a, uh, a, a monthly membership with coaching every single week. So if you are struggling with fundraising through this crisis and you want an expert coach, it's rachelmuir.com forward slash join is where you can find out more uh, about my monthly program. It's called the League of Extraordinary Fundraisers and it's fundraisers working together. We do a workshop every single month. Um, you can just join the workshop or if you like, you can get some coaching. So that's rachelmuir.com forward slash join. And I am going to turn this over to the fantastic Julia Campbell. 
Thank you. That was awesome. And thank you for driving um, the slides. So today I am going to talk about some time savers um, specifically for social media and for your digital fundraising. And actually, I, Rachel, I use a lot of those tools that you mentioned, um, and I absolutely love them. And I just downloaded the Felt app to my phone because I'm actually kind of sick of writing thank you notes. <laughs> I've been writing them out. My handwriting's terrible. And I'm really excited to have some really nice notes going out to like my clients and even to my family. So especially at this time, we all love to get um, mail right now. I, I know that my mail's been cut in half from what I used to get. So I love getting letters in the mail. So when I give this presentation, I feel like a lot of the times at your conferences, at your webinars, you're going to hear about the usual suspects, okay? So I have to mention them because I can't live without them, but we're going to talk about some tools today that you might not have heard of. So of course, Canva. If you have not heard of Canva, that is just absolutely worth your time to check it out. You don't even have to get the nonprofit premium account. They do offer premium accounts for nonprofits and discounts for nonprofits. I use the free account for all of my graphic design needs anything on my blog, anything on my social media, it's the best. And then I use Buffer and Hootsuite um, in combination, depending on what I'm doing and which social media site I'm using to schedule posts and to monitor hashtags and to run reports on my social media sites. And then Facebook Creator Studio, this is something that's totally free. Facebook is pushing it um, and they want you to schedule Facebook posts to your pages via Facebook Creator Studio. You can also use it to schedule posts to your Instagram account. So those are some of the tools that I absolutely can't live without, but let's talk about some that you might not have heard of. Before we begin, I wanna give you just some of my, my best tips for social media. So I do use automation and scheduling tools, but I use them sparingly and I only use them for certain channels. Now this is where it gets into, you have to know your channel. All of the channels that we're using, even email or website, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever it is, all of them are different countries and they all have different languages, different etiquette, different manners, different inhabitants. You cannot buy a guidebook for Germany if you're planning a trip to Italy. It's not going to work. So everything that you know works on Facebook, you can't assume is going to work on Twitter, on Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, I like automation if I have some time in the morning and I see a few articles that I'd like to share with my community, but I don't want to tweet out 27 articles in a row. <laughs> I don't want to clog up people's Twitter feeds or clog up people's LinkedIn feeds or Facebook feeds. That's when I use scheduling. It's also important to know that scheduling to Facebook with outside tools, your reach and organic engagement is gonna decrease. So use Facebook Creator Studio if you wanna to schedule to Instagram and Facebook because they don't play nicely with others. Also, you have to be human. I mean, be human, be professional, but be authentic. So especially right now, and Rachel and both Rachels touched on it, we're craving that human connection right now. We want to know that there are people behind the brands. The other two points, please don't spend five hours tweaking and creating and doing the perfect Facebook post if that's not your full-time job. If it is your full-time job as a graphic designer, by all means do that. But please don't stress out. Perfection is the enemy of the done. And then please, and we'll go to the next slide, Use unexpected visuals and graphics, okay? I cannot, no, I can't do the hands with the flowers or the hands in a heart or the team meeting with all the things. No, you, you know the cheesy stock photography you've seen over and over and over again. In order to grab eyeballs and cut through the clutter, I think that we need to get a little more creative, especially if you're using stock photography if you don't have your own photography. All right, so we're gonna talk about our first tool, or my first tool. If you're using Instagram Stories, you should check out Storito. It's a really cute 
and very easy to use and pretty fun tool to create and schedule Instagram stories from your desktop. So a question that I get all the time, I get, um, Julia, how can I manage my Instagram account and constantly be putting up content without being tied to my phone, like without being tethered to my phone? I really want a way that I can create things from a desktop. So with Storito, and you can go ahead um, to the next slide. With Storito, you can post and schedule. You can actually add hashtags and tag accounts. You can add all of the stickers that you're used to when you're creating your Instagram stories. Like the interface in Storito looks exactly like if you were creating an Instagram story from your phone. So it has all of the bells and wickle, w whistles and stickers and all of those kinds of things. They have great templates. Um, and if you go to the next slide, you'll see what it looks like. You select your Instagram account. So you can, you know, obviously you need administrator privileges and the login information for your nonprofit Instagram account. If you have the capability to add a web link, you can add a clickable link. That's the swipe up feature on Instagram stories, but that's just for business accounts with more than 10,000 followers. What I should say here is you can't create Instagram story ads from Storito. You still have to do all of your Facebook ads, all of your Instagram ads, all of your story ads, everything in the Facebook ads manager. This is just for organic. Um, this is just for organic content that you're not paying to boost. And then you can choose when Storito should publish your story. So some ways that you can use this is especially right now when we don't have that much in the field content, we probably have zero in the field content. We don't have any live, um, we don't have any event coverage. We're not at events, we're not talking to people, we're not talking to donors. Creating stories that reflect your brand and maybe asking questions, doing some polls every once in a while, maybe you're sharing work from home diaries and stories of your team as we all navigate this virtual world that we're living in and working from home with our kids and our spouses and our dogs and everything else. So those are some of the ways you can use Instagram stories to keep top of mind and keep a presence and not feel like you're tethered to your phone and you're constantly having to create this content because Dorito and actually Canva as well, they have fantastic Instagram story templates. So if you have some text or if you have some photos, if you have an idea, if you have a thought, if you have some nugget of information to share, you can schedule this out to make sure that you have a pretty consistent um, presence on the platform. And the best part of Cerrito is that it's incredibly cheap. The free plan is probably what many, many small organizations are gonna to wanna to use. Of course, it's no dollars a month for up to 10 posts. That's the one that I use and 15 a month for 100 posts. And then you do have to apply for a nonprofit discount. You do have to email them and let them know um, because I had emailed them because I didn't see anything on their website. And the executive director, the president got back to me and said, just let anybody um, just have anybody email me and there's contact information and there's like a chat bot on their site and you can apply to get that discount. So I think Storito is, is fantastic. So let us know in the chat box and I can't see the replies. So I'm going to leave can help that you. too. Yeah, I'm <laughs> going to leave that too. Um, Rachel and Rachel, but I want to know, do you share stories on Instagram? and or Facebook. And a pro tip is that if you have an Instagram business account for your nonprofit or any kind of Instagram account for your nonprofit, you can set it up to auto share your stories from Instagram to your Facebook stories. So you're hitting more people and you can, um, there's Facebook page stories. So you wanna make sure that it's set up correctly, but you also wanna make sure that yeah, you want to make sure it's set up correctly and not going from your nonprofit Instagram account to your personal Facebook page or what I was doing, my personal Instagram account to my professional Facebook page stories. So just make sure it's, it sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. But if you're using stories, there's a great way to kind of touch both audiences and get more bang for your buck. Okay. Oh, yeah. It looks like about stories. Oh, 
I was going to tell you that looks like about 75% of the, our audience is using stories. Um, a lot of them mostly on Facebook. Oh, okay. So Storito works for Instagram, but the way I feel about it is you could put it on Instagram and then automatically populate it to Facebook. So that would actually hit both accounts. Um, but that's great. And I know, I don't, I know that you cannot schedule Facebook stories in Facebook Creator Studio yet, but I believe that's a feature that's coming. All right, my second tool, this one is pretty incredible. And now that I have, I always say that I have a little bit more time, but I really don't have any more time right now. In fact, I feel like I have less free time than I did um, even before the quarantine, just because of kids and homeschooling and everything like that. But one of my goals on my to-do list is to go through my videos on my YouTube channel with Tube Buddy. So it's a free browser extension. You can get the paid account. It's like a freemium. You know, you can get the free account and then you can upgrade it. But every feature that I use and I like comes with the free account. And basically how it works, you can go to the next slide. There's some amazing features inside TubeBuddy. So it helps you with your title, it helps you with your thumbnail, it helps you with your description, it gives you a checklist that you can use. So you're making sure that you are, you know, dotting your I's and crossing your T's with every YouTube video that you put out there. It gives you the suggestions for the proper tags. It just really helps you make your YouTube content more discoverable, more easy to find in search, um, easier to understand what it is and more consistent. And if you want to read an awesome case study, Mark Horvath, he doesn't, you know, work for TubeBuddy, but he wrote a case study about how he just spent 15 minutes a day um, using TubeBuddy to really tweak and improve his videos on YouTube. And he grew Invisible People from 40,000 a month to 4 million monthly viewers. So think if you could increase your views, you know, 10%, 100%. So the way it works is that um, you enter your keyword. This is one of my favorite features of TubeBuddy. You enter a keyword that you would like to rank on. Say it's, you know, breast cancer or children's or like hunger or poverty or racism or sexism or domestic violence, whatever the keyword is that you want to rank on in the search in YouTube, you click, um, you go to keyword and you click on explore. And then on the next slide, it should show you. It's gonna show you the competition and it's gonna show you how you would rank if you used these keywords. So this is great because what I think so often is that nonprofits get very focused on their organizations and we wanna put our organization name in the title. And very rarely are people searching for our organization names unless we're in the news, unless we're a big name. So you wanna, create your YouTube titles based on the topic that your audience is searching for. And what TubeBuddy is going to do is tell you, this is a great keyword and you're going to be able to rank for this, or there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of noise around this. Here are some ideas for other keywords that you can use. So as you can see, charity live streaming is good as opposed to like Facebook fundraising, which would be very competitive and very hard to rank for. So those are just some of the things in the back end of TubeBuddy that I really like. So TubeBuddy, $9 a month. I mean, I have um, the, I got the free version for 30 days. I'm still using the free version. You can use the key, the keyword search for free. Uh, the thing is that there's a lot of ads on this. There's a lot of ads on it and you don't get as much functionality without the $9 a month, but I'm hoping that when I do get some time and I'm going to be able to go through my videos, I will be able to utilize like the pro or the star account. You also can click on, I'm part of a nonprofit and email support at tubebuddy.com for details. Now I encourage you, even if you don't have a YouTube channel, if you have any video content at all, put it on YouTube because YouTube is the number two search engine owned by the number one search engine and people are on YouTube right now and they use YouTube to search for things that they're interested in learning more about, search for things that they care about, search for things that they want information on. So all nonprofits should have a robust presence or at least a presence on YouTube. That's 
smiley YouTube soapbox. Okay, live streaming. Now, when we first created this webinar together, I had picked these three tools and it's so interesting because, I, you know, with coronavirus, with COVID-19, with social distancing, I would have picked the exact same three tools. I think that live streaming is only growing in its popularity and proliferation across the sector. And to do it professionally and effectively and consistently, um, you do need some of these tools. So for me, rather than going live from Facebook Creator Studio, Facebook Publisher, that's been really buggy for me. Like if I just go live from my Facebook page, it hasn't really worked. You can't bring in people, you can't share your screen. It hasn't worked for me. So I really like Be Live TV because you can schedule live broadcasts. So this means you can send out a link <clears throat> via your email list or your social media channels for your followers to RSVP and get a reminder when you go live, which is really, really great. That way they don't just go to your page and kind of scroll around and try to find the Facebook Live. You can also share your screen. You can invite others on the screen and you can do text overlay and branding, um, which I really, really like. And that means you can just put some text on the screen. If you have, you know, sign up for my Giving Tuesday checklist text, the words giving Tuesday to 55444, or if you have a link you want to put on screen or names you want to put on screen. Um, and obviously you would want to close your closet door probably as I did not do in this, <laughs> in this be live TV demonstration. Um, but you can set your destination. You can go live either on YouTube or Facebook. Um, and what I really like about be live is as opposed to Zoom, because I know a lot of us are using Zoom to go live um, and to stream to Facebook and push it out to Facebook and YouTube. Zoom has you know, the chat feature that's within Zoom, but it doesn't pull in the comments from Facebook. So if you're a sole practitioner like me and you're going live, then you have to monitor the Zoom chat, you have to monitor the YouTube chat, and you have to monitor the Facebook Live chat all three different places platforms different discussions different conversations different questions and it's a lot to manage if you're just like one person or two people so what i like about be live is that they actually bring all of the chats into the dashboard and so you don't even have to leave the be live tv dashboard at all you can get all your questions all your comments you can see when people join you live you can give them a shout out. You can actually like comments, respond to comments. If you want to type a response, that's really um, my favorite feature of Be Live. And you can see at the bottom here, you can bring people in. So there's a feature where you can add a guest and they would get a link and they'll go to that link and then they'll be in a waiting room, like a green room. And then you can pull them in very easily just with those little arrows onto your screen. Okay. I just love BeLive. This is what it looks like on Facebook. So this is not the BeLive TV dashboard, but this is what it ends up looking like when you broadcast live. Since I'm cheap and I have the free version, I get the little BeLive logo, but if you pay the, um, you know, the nominal fee for the pro account, you can do your own branding. Um, and then you can also, you know, all of the comments will come in in real time and you can manage them from Be Live, um, and then manage them afterwards from Facebook. It lives on your Facebook page. You can still download the video file afterwards. You can add captions. You can repurpose it and, and do many, many things with it after you go live. So the nonprofit discount, I couldn't figure it out and get a straight answer from anyone. So they do have a request form. It's actually a Google form. Um, I would recommend, of course, when you start out, use the basic package, the free package, which gives you three Facebook Lives per month. Um, you get branding colors, you get some assets, you can have up to two people on the screen. If you're doing more than three shows per month and you want to get BeLive TV's branding off of there, you could do the standard account um, and then talk to them about what kind of discount they might be offering. 
And some last tips about Facebook Live. I do know this is a huge, huge topic right now. If you're going to go live each week, a lot of organizations are going live each week, even just for seven to 10 minutes, giving an update, giving an, you know, a view from the executive director's desk. Try to stick to a regular schedule. It lets people know that you're going live and then they're more likely to show up week after week. Definitely promote it if you can. Say, you know, today we're going live. Let people know a couple days before. Let people know a week before. If you have Facebook charitable giving tools, you can add the donate button uh, to raise money in real time. Um, even after the broadcast ends, it will still pull in donations. And then when you're live, encourage people to share um, and to interact, to ask questions, to comment. Let them know there's benefits to watching it live as opposed to an on-demand video that's been pre-recorded. The other pro tip I wanna give you if you're using Facebook Live is to go live for at least seven minutes because what I've heard from some live streaming experts is that your Facebook fans are gonna get a notification when you go live initially, but then after seven minutes, even more of your fans, your, your B-listers, um, your A-listers who are the most engaged people are gonna get notified and your less engaged people will get notified after seven minutes. So make sure you're going live for at least seven minutes and then encourage people to sign up to get notified and to sign up to get the replay if that's something that they wanna do. So thank you, I really appreciate you having me on this webinar today, I hope that helped. I look forward to your questions and now I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel C. Thanks, Julia. All right, I am back and I've got time savers for sleuthing and productivity. Now, let me say up front, when I say sleuthing, let's think insightful versus creepy. So I'm gonna take that banana tag idea that Rachel showed you earlier and just expand on a little bit. And we're gonna learn how donors are interacting with our content. And then we'll also look at some productivity tools for working from home. Okay, so the first tool is GMAS. It's an email marketing software that enables users to run campaigns straight from their Gmail accounts. It does require that you use Gmail for your mail, which some uh, sleuthing tells me about half of you do. Um, if you have Outlook, um, there's something called Sales Handy, which also helps with this, or Outlook may have Mail Merge. I think, in fact, they do have Mail Merge um, as well. And that is the key feature for GMAS. Um, imagine this, you have a small event. So let's say you have 30 people attend and you wanna send personal emails to each attendee after the event. Instead of copying and pasting each email, you can create one GMAS, GMAS email that will send 30 separate personal emails to those 30 people. So we'll take a, look at, a little closer look at that in a minute, but that it does mail merge. It also connects to um, Google Sheets. So looking at the, sorry, you can go back, Rachel. <laughs> um, to the next slide is great. Um, so basically when you set up those 30 emails to send, Rachel, you can go to the next slide. Okay, yeah, when you set up those emails to send, you can actually put in 30 different email addresses or link it to a Google Sheets. So say for example, from your event that you have a download from Eventbrite, you can link to that sheet right there in GMAS and it will send 30 separate emails. So looking at this animation, you send the email, it can also populate their first name for you if that's in your sheet. And then it puts 30 different emails in your sent inbox. So if people reply, they reply solely to you works really nicely that way. Moving to the next slide, you can also track your clicks and your opens, much like banana tag. You can see what percentage of your audience opened that email, which ones clicked it, and then you can download an Excel sheet with that as well. As far as cost goes, um, GMAS is free actually, if you send less than 50 emails um, in a 24 hour period. So for a lot of us, like that small event, you could send that email for free. Um, the prices are a little bit cheaper if you are paying annually. So these are the monthly fees and they do offer a 15% nonprofit discount. Right now they have on their site that you can send any coronavirus emails for free. So they also have an offer right now, especially. Moving to the next tool, we're gonna take GMAS and the tools of that a little bit further. And I wanna introduce you to MixMax. Again, MixMax is a Google Chrome extension that works with Gmail. However, if you use Outlook or something like that, do not fret. I'm told there's an option called Yesware that has a lot of the same features as MixMax. So as I share these, if you like that, um, Yesware would be your alternative. So again, it has mail merge much like um, GMAS. 
It can also track attachments. So if you want to know if they looked at that attachment, um, you can know that. If you want to know if they, um, how much time they spent looking it over, you'll know that. So a lot of times we want to know not just if they opened it, but like, did they spend enough time with it? Um, especially if they asked you to send them something, right? Um, you can also develop and automate an email schedule. We'll take a look at that in a moment. You can make and use templates where you can streamline your email process. It also has beautiful calendaring, calendaring, cal calendaring and pretty links, which is one of my favorites. I'll show you what, what all this looks like. So uh, you can create sequences in Mixmax and sequences are basically a series of emails that go out on a schedule. So if you're familiar with the phrase drip campaign, um, that's what sequences are. So there are a lot of things that um, you can do with a sequence. Um, you're looking into my <laughs> sequences right now, a little behind the scenes here. So I go to a lot of conferences and I meet people um, at these conferences and I wanna do a follow-up. I wanna send the follow-up to, you know, 20 people that I met and I just want to follow up with slides or something like that, but I want it to look personalized. I use Mixmax for that. And then I can also, um, if I haven't heard back from them, so for example, say I want to meet them at a conference, send them an initial email asking to meet up. If I don't hear from them, I can schedule another email to follow up a week later and say, hey, I haven't heard from you. You know, time's running out. Just wanted to see if we could meet up. Um, it'll also tell you how many people viewed that email, how many people clicked that email, and how many replies back. You got so you can get data around each individual sequence or around all of your sequences and um, looking at the next slide you can also see who opened sorry rachel go back <laughs> you can also see who opened uh, your emails and who clicked them so in this instance um, i had an email called analytics question for you i can see that my recipients opened it twice and she clicked one of my links as well so this is beautiful to show you exactly which link they clicked and then looking at the scheduling, um, this is an example. I was, you know, emailing Lisa and I was looking for some times that we could schedule on our calendars. And what I love about this, if you do a lot of meetings, which we know a lot of fundraisers do, maybe not right this minute in person, but you're at least having virtual meetings, you can go into your calendar and select a few times. Um, and then it will make these times look like little buttons in your email. So it pops it in there. It's real easy for that person to click that button. Um, and then it adds it to both of your calendars. So it just makes things really easy. And then if they change or cancel or something, it automatically updates your calendar as well. No need to keep going back and forth. And then probably my favorite thing that Mixmax does, because I am a former designer and I love um, design and visuals, it takes any links that you include in your emails and it makes them visual. So it'll show a preview of that link. It'll give you the headline, it'll show the first line of the link, and it'll also include any images that are included with that. And we know that people tend to click on links that include imagery. Um, we are drawn to imagery. And so you can see how that looks here. It's beautiful, I love it. And I think we have seen an increase in our clicks because of it. As far as pricing for Mixmax, um, these prices, again, I'm showing them monthly, but it's cheaper if you pay for the year. They do have a 14-day free trial. I use their small biz um, option. So if you are a typical nonprofit or association or something and you want to do the, oh, sorry, the things I have showed you how to do, you can do that with the small biz plan. And then... Um, Okay, moving on before we head into our productivity tools in the it's actually the questions box in the questions box. If you have any productivity tools that you love, I would love to see what you've got there. So feel free to go ahead and pop those in and I'll move to the next slide while we're doing that. Um, okay, so to do to do that's pronounced to do it's like a Cajun version of <laughs> to do. It's a simple designy browser based to do app and it has an iPhone app. So I use it. I'm in my I'm on my computer almost all day when I'm not in meetings. And so I use the, the web app for it. Um, and what it does is it basically allows you to see your calendar at a glance. You can see five days. You're looking at the web view right now. And I can type in um, basically what I want my to-do to be. So you'll see um, the blue bar is indicating what I'm showing here. So um, I, I put in, I want to show people how to use to-do. And then... Um, you can also see that I can move things from one day to another. So if you are like me and you really loved your 
paper version of your to-do list, um, this is a great alternative for moving away from that. It takes a little bit of work, but it is so much easier. Um, and the nice thing about it, if you don't click something off on Friday, it will automatically move it to Saturday for you. I love that about this. So I don't have to like keep adding it. The thing with paper is that you have to keep writing every day if you didn't get to something. So it's beautiful for that reason. And then the next feature is this box at the bottom. Um, these are called someday list. And so they live, they don't, they're evergreen. They don't remove themselves from day to day. And they're just things that you can keep adding to on an ongoing basis. So you'll see I have 2021 budget needs. I'm already thinking about what do I want to budget for 2021? And so I've added things I wanted to uh, add there. And then when 2021 budgeting comes up, I'll go in and check that. And then the other thing it does, much like the paper, most of us, if you use paper, you're using it because you like to cross off that thing that you did. Um, this does a visual cross off for you. So it feels really good. It brings that level of satisfaction. And I know a lot of us add things just to cross them off and also do that and to do. So I highly recommend them. Um, as far as pricing goes, they do offer a 30 day free trial. Be warned, once you start using it, it's hard not to use it. Um, it also runs $3 a month or $24 a year. They do not offer a nonprofit discount, but at that rate, kind of hard to argue with that. Okay, our next tool is the Pomodoro technique. Maybe some of you are familiar with this. It's a time management method that uses a timer to break work into intervals. And it's also, um, you can also have phone apps for it. So it literally started with a kitchen timer. It's, it's the old school version here, but it is virtual. And here's how it works. You decide on a task to be done. So it's something that like you need to focus on, something that will take you about 25 minutes or it will take you three hours and you can break it down into 25 minute chunks because you're gonna set your first timer for 25 minutes. You're gonna work on that task until the timer rings and then you're gonna take a short five minute break. And you're gonna do that cycle four times until you finally, after the four cycles, take a longer break. So if you think about it, in the morning, you could chunk up your work into four of these cycles, take a lunch break, again, chunk it up in the afternoon. Some people have a hard time focusing. In the normal world, when I'm in my office, I have a hard time rem remembering to get up from my desk. That's actually why I started using it. I was like, oh, I need to remember to drink water or like, you know, get up and move around. Um, it can also be used, clearly, it's meant to be used for focus. So um, lots of benefit there. And then it is free if you have a timer, you have the Pomodoro technique at your fingertips. Um, they do have Google Chrome extensions. I use one called Marinara, and there's also plenty of apps for your phone as well. And then moving into our last um, tool, this one's more fun. A lot of us are stuck at home, clearly. We are wanting to do a little retail therapy online, and there's a free tool called Honey. It's a Chrome plugin. Many of you probably know about this, but for those of you that don't, I'm about to change your life. Um, it automatically finds and applies coupon codes when you shop online. So previous to finding Honey, I would go to a checkout. I would get to that promo code and go, oh yeah, I should go look for a promo code. And then I want to go to um, Retail Me Not and all the couponcodes.com and all those things to try to remember which one worked, which one's better. Honey does all of that for you. And it works on your favorite websites. Um, it works on things like Best Buy, J. Crew. Honestly, once you have it installed, it'll just pull it up every time you hit a shopping um, pay or a cart. And um, like yesterday, I made a, I made a Michael's order and um, it saved me 20% right out the gate. So love it. If you don't have it, go get it. Okay. This brings us to the end of our slides today and our tools. You can get the slides and there's a link to a cheat sheet of all the tools available at mightycitizen.com slash time saving. And so go there and get those links. We will also be sending a follow-up email with slides and a video recording. So um, don't worry if you didn't capture everything, this will come to you directly into your inbox. So go ahead and type your questions in. And um, we also have things available from each of our websites, Mighty Citizen. We have tools, free tools and templates for fundraisers and communicators at mightycitizen.com slash tools. And there's my email. Rachel has tools and that sample video email at rachelmuir.com slash tools. And then Julia has items, freebies, training at jcsocialmarketing.com slash 
freebies. So go get those things. They are very handy. And in the meantime, I'm going to check on the questions box. And I know we had some questions for Rachel and Julia earlier. So let me pull those up. Awesome. Yeah, I saw, yeah. I saw mm -hmm. one was, so someone asked, can you use bomb bomb generically in response to online donations? You can, bomb bomb is a great tool to use to follow up and thank your donors for your, for their gift. Um, you can go to that website, rachelmarie.com forward slash tools. And if you drop your name there, you'll be sent an example of me doing exactly that. And what I, and what you'll see in the example is I have this like little chalkboard and I write the donor's name on it. Like I'll write like, hello, or thank you, Rachel, or thank you, Julia. And then, and, and, and then I go in with my script, but the first thing they see is like, thank you, Julia written on a chalkboard. And they're like, what? And Julia like, can't stop clicking on that. That's like her name. And she's like, what is this? So, <laughs> bum, bum, Great to use. You absolutely can send one bomb bomb to a whole list. You can upload. I did this one once upon a time. Big shock. I did a webinar. I'm going to love doing webinars. But once mm -hmm. upon a time, I did this webinar and I sent it to, every, I sent out the webinar link in a bomb bomb video email. Uh, I, I sadly had it set to, to notify me when people opened it. And I instantly had like 600 notifications. So if you send a bomb bomb to multiple people, I would not turn on the notification. I would only turn on the notification if it was like one message to a donor, but you can totally, I mean, there are smart nonprofits using bomb bomb to communicate and do stewardship and talk to volunteers and talk to board members. And you can gain so much scale and efficiency in using it. And I had another question that asked, are the felt cards sent digitally or literally in the mail? Literally in the mail, my fundraising friends, literally in the mail. Those are real cards. Um, and someone asked, does Textology come from your phone number? Yes, it will, they'll give you a number. It's not from your number, they'll give you a number. And another thing that I didn't even mention that's super cool about Textology is that you upload all of your names and phone numbers and textology will tell you which is a landline and which is a mobile number their technology knows that but no the whole point of textology is not to send mass text messages there's a product for that it's called text fox but textology mm -hmm. is one-off messages that's why you don't have that um you know notification if you've ever gotten a mass email like say you're you know, trying to get a coupon to, you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, and it sends you a text, the, the coupon via text, and it says, you know, messaging rates may apply, yada, yada, yada. That's what happens when, um, like for FCC laws, when you send group messages, but this is individual one-offs. So Textology is a one-off tool, and I will pass the baton to Rachel and Julia for other questions. Great. Julia, did you see those list of questions for you? Did you have any you wanted to answer? Or I can read them out to oh, you. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry. I looked at no the Okay. How is Facebook Creator Studio different than the built-in Facebook scheduling tools? It is the Facebook scheduling tools. Um, you are not, uh, you're not able to schedule from your Facebook page anymore because you have to go to Creator Studio. So it, when you try to schedule from your page, if you create a post and you try to schedule it, it will tell you you have to use publishing tools and Creator Studio. So it's all the same thing. It's all within Facebook, but you can't do scheduling on your page anymore. You have to use their Creator Studio. Uh, let's see. Is there any data on ROI, return on investment, for stories versus regular posts in either Facebook or Instagram? Well, the data that I've seen... Uh, shows that stories are poised to take over in terms of engagement and content. So people are not interacting and engaging and seeing as many posts in the feed, the normal Instagram feed or the normal Facebook feed, as they are Instagram stories and Facebook stories. So in terms of reach and in terms of engagement, but you know ROI, return on investment, that all depends on what your goal is for sharing the content and it depends on the goal of the campaign. But definitely 
they are more popular and seen by more people than um, stories in than sorry content that's in the feed. Okay, two more I see for me, unless I'm missing. That sounds one. right. Okay, our stories on social media are not governed by my department. How can I garner support from my board to gain some of those controls? Well, I don't know who controls the story. Sounds like the board, perhaps. The board? That'd be surprising, um, right? My, my number one tip is to have a plan when you go to the board. So rather than say, I want control, this isn't fair, I need control, this is my job, which I understand that completely. I've been a development director who was given very little discretion when I first started. And what I found was that my executive director and my board really responded to like a one page plan. Like this is what exactly what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how much time it's going to take. This is what I'm going to take off my plate in order to do this. Here are the resources that I need. And this is my plan of execution. So I think if you create like a one page plan that says, this is something that I really want to explore for our nonprofit because X, Y, Z, and here's how it's going to happen. Here's the timeline. I want to post try posting twice a week, and then maybe we can expand from there. Here are the type of topics that I would like to talk about and then get their buy-in that way. Um, so the more specific you can be, the better. And then um, for Julia, do viewers need a YouTube account to use Be Live? Well, okay, so you can use Be Live TV to stream to YouTube where people don't have to have a YouTube channel to watch your video. So anyone on earth can watch your YouTube live if you're streaming live to YouTube. So for viewers, they don't have to have a YouTube account to view it. Um, and for Facebook live, they do have to have a Facebook account to watch your Facebook live. However, Facebook is changing those rules, which I think is very interesting. They're changing those rules and they're rolling out something where you can call in. So sort of like you can call in to go to webinar. <laughs> you can call in to the Facebook Live and get the audio. And you can get audio only if you don't have a good data connection or you don't have good Wi-Fi. So they're rolling out those tools so to make Facebook Lives more accessible. But with YouTube, pretty much anybody, um, anybody can watch it. If you're talking about broadcasting, you do have to have a YouTube channel to broadcast a YouTube live. Um, and you also have to have a Facebook account to broadcast on Facebook. So I hope that answers those questions. All right, I've got one here. Someone said regarding Mixmax, could you compare that with MailChimp? And so here's how we, we use something called Campaign Monitor, which is very similar to MailChimp. And here's how I use them differently. I use Campaign Monitor when I wanna email my, my big old list and I want it to be visual and um, graphical. So things like email newsletters, things like that. I'll mail the full list um, through Campaign Monitor or something like MailChimp. When I want something that looks more personable and looks like it came from me as a personal email, you know, in my Gmail, I will use Mixmax. So Mixmax is not going to have a whole bunch of graphics and stuff. I'll have those link previews, but that's about it. Um, it definitely looks more personal. So that's how I distinguish between those two. And then someone asked any programs or apps that can be used for ticklers so that we can set reminders to email people at certain intervals or on certain dates. Again, Mixmax will do that for you. That is called sequences for them. And yes, you can set up to you know send three emails over three weeks or three emails over three days. Um, it has a lot of flexibility there. All right, so we'll wrap it up there. I just wanna remind everyone that we do have one last webinar next Thursday how to create effective audience surveys, and you can get info on that at mightycitizen.com slash events. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, go be virtual, and thank you to Rachel and Julia. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks, y'all. Thank, thank you. you guys.